Peace, everyone. Welcome to our Friday night, and today's topic is standing on your spiritual feet. We have a jam-packed message for you tonight, and let's go ahead and bring in the rest of the panel. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 All right. Peace. So today's topic, standing on your spiritual feet. Uh, let's just kick things off. Um, I want to hear what everyone's thoughts are. What do you think it means to stand on your own spiritual feet? Well, what I think about you know, first of all, I think it's it's uh, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, so we'll come back to Elder Denise. Uh, did anyone else want to give it a try? Well, yeah, um, I, I I think about um, a child, right? A child standing up. And, and you see the parents, there's so much excitement for that first step because now they're developing, you know, getting balance, you know, taking their first step toward life, you know. So I think I, I, that's, that's definitely connected to, to our path as, as an Israelite, you know. The family wants us to come back home, to serve the God of Israel, to stand up and do what's right. So it, it, there's so much emotion and so much, you know, you can reflect back and, and think about your, your for the first time you heard about the, this doctrine or you heard about other Sherlock and you heard him speak. It's something different, totally new. And you and it, and it, and it immediately cause a reaction. You have to do something. You have to do something. That's what I, that's what I think about it. That's so true. That's a great take. I liked hearing that, Elder Dexter. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to give a swing at it? Yeah, in my in my hand would be like um, a pillar, a strong pillar, standing strong for the guide of resort, and standing strong for our culture, and standing strong for our nation. So a strong pillar. We cannot fall down. No one can take it down. That's a great analogy. Uh, I like the child and the pillar one. Those are really good analogies. Uh, anyone else want to? We're just going to go around the table here. So, Sure. When I think about uh, standing on your spiritual feet, I just think about support. Um, support from family, support um, from brethren, uh, just support from the things that we kind of like experience. Um, as a nation with Bible study, uh, being around brethren. I think about the unity and the love that um, we offer each other as uh, Israelites and as a uh, family and community. That's a great one. And finally, Bianca. Yeah, um, I agree with what everyone else said. I mean, for me, I think standing on your spiritual feet, it just means being grounded and being confident in your walk. You know, it's not always going to be easy, but you have to trust in the God of Israel that he will not lead you astray. Those are great takes. I love hearing from all y'all. Those are really good. Um, for me personally, for standing on your spiritual feet, um, it's kind of hard to think because I think you guys basically hit all the points of it already. You guys already have a great understanding of what it means. Um, but for me, I think standing on your spiritual feet is um, having, I guess, a strong connection to our God, um, being able to lean on him in those times of needs and knowing where your um, where your strength lies. Like um, how um, it was said, Uncle Hilaire said, um, it's like you're a pillar, you know, you need foundation, you know. Um, and I feel like that foundation is our religion, our culture, our God. That's what we lean on for support in times of need. So that's kind of just how I see standing on your spiritual feet. And once again, these are just words that you guys have all been saying already. So <laughs> really good. So moving on, we're going to start off with the first slide of the night. Hey, there you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then next slide. All right. Understanding. 
Romans 5, 1 through 5, the Israelite creed and identity. Did anyone want to read for us tonight? I can go ahead and give it a go. <laughs> Romans 5, 1 to 5. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bury me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and whom, as concerning the flesh, the flesh Christ came who is overall God blessed forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. wow. That's, That's a powerful deep. scripture. Man. Deep. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I look and see this. If you don't mind me, go ahead and interject. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it says so much. It says who we are. It, say, it proclaims who you know, Paul, this is Paul's words, right? It says who who he is. But not only that, it, 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 as those people who um, don't know the scripture, and it, it says Israelites, and it tells us our responsibility. is our identity, our culture, our responsibility as Israelites. That's a lot. That's a lot, and it is five verses. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true to... elder elder dexter that is so true because there's no mistake in it just lays it out plainly you can't uh misconstrue it you can't misunderstand it it literally lets us know who we are right. yeah so how do my, my question how do they how do they how can you misunderstand that those verses it's so powerful how can you misunderstand and how can you read that and say you no know i'm a christian how can you do that? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't understand mm -hmm. that. It gives me yeah. strength. When I read it, it gives me so much strength to know who I am, you know, our history, yeah. our culture, our people, who Christ came for. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's free. That's so I, I agree with what Edgar Dexter here. Um, the more that the, the, the scripture said, uh, the more it's given, the more it's required. So basically for us, We've been given everything. So the requirement for us, what are we going to do about it? Mm. Are we just going to sit? Or are you going to work for our God and for our people and make it right this time? That's mm. what it means the scripture for me. Mm -hmm. That's um, and you know, uh, just from my perspective and how I kind of see how it relates to everything is to stand on your spiritual feet and to talk about having that support, as we mentioned earlier, you have to know who you are, you know? That's the basis of everything. To have mm -hmm. any kind of reliance on anything or anyone, you have to understand who you are, what your purpose is, and what your importance is. And I feel like just as um, how Ododexo said and until Yvonne said, this plain in scripture, it's right there. It says what the job and role of an Israelite is. Um, this is Paul just saying it clearly for you to hear. Uh, it says, talks about the promises. Uh, it talks about all of the promises that we made with God, everything that means to be an Israelite. And I feel like to truly stand on your spiritual feet, you can't do that unless you un read this verse for one and understand what it means. Um, and just the real embodiment of what it means to be a true Israelite. Yes. Totally agree, Levi. Identity. You have to know who you are. You have to know your identity. It starts with that. And that's really with anything. And especially with this truth, if you don't know your identity, there's no way, like Elder Dexter was saying before, you know, how can you even call yourself a Christian? When you read this and know that this is you, that's the beginning of standing on your spiritual feet, because now you have a foundation to stand on. And that is this truth. So very good point. You know, the difference between uh, um, people memorize scriptures, right? Memorize, they, they, they can just spit them out like crazy. But do they truly understand the substance of the scripture? Do they understand what it's saying? Do we understand who's saying it and to whom he's saying it to? 
you know, it's so much, it's so much, in, you know, thank God to the, our, our elder Sharak and the Israelite nation for teaching us this, this, this scripture because we've been so long in, in the dark. And these mm -hmm. five verses, if imagine if the world would understand these five verses, these five mm -hmm. verses, man, it, mm -hmm. it, it tells you everything. It tells you, it tells you Old Testament and New Testament, right? It tells you the whole story of us. You know, man, it's, it's, it's so, wow. It, you, maybe you want to say, where, where were my eyes? How could not, I couldn't see that before, you know? But now I see it, and man, it makes it so plain and simple. But we make it, we make it, we make it tough and rough because we, we, we have our baggage, <laughs> our bags that we bring to the, to the scripture and we see other stuff. But he was plain. Paul couldn't be any plain than that. He can't be any plain to the point to that. He can't. And I really, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was just going to say, I mean, we've been lied to for so long through Christianity, you know, through the church. And once you really like find out who you are and you embrace that, you start reading the scripture differently and you just start interpreting it. Like we are the people of Israel. And, you know, once we are standing in that and confident in that, you know, you just start seeing everything differently. Yeah, that's so true. And yeah, I kind of agree with Bianca here. Uh, basically, actions speak more than words. That's what I understand here. As an Israelite, um, the question we should ask ourselves, now I know who I am, I know my identity. So yeah. what am I supposed to do? You have to search yeah. what the God Israel wants me to do to move forward for yeah. this nation, for what's my purpose. Now I know who I am, because like like uh, um, Yvonne said, we were lost. We know we didn't know who we are. So now we yeah. know who we are. So what mm -hmm. am I supposed to do? That's the question I should ask myself every day. What's the requirement? What I need to do to make it right? You know, yeah. and to be yeah. onto that level. That's why as a news read, that's the question I should ask myself every day when I wake up. That's so true. Wow. Well, that's good, uh, Hilaire, uh, what you just said at the end, just asking yourself that question every day. I mean, that's like, you know, I mean, I can honestly say I don't do that, ask myself that question every day. By, but by asking yourself that question every day, you're reminding yourself, too, you know, of who you are and um, who it is that we serve. So that's that's really a good point. I think I, I'm going to start doing that myself. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and just I think even in some way I even kind of just think it goes beyond just um uh at <laughs> asking the questions you know I think it's kind of just living the life that you were meant to live um yeah. and what I mean by that is just living this life living this bible uh I think Elder Dexter said people read this bible know that from front to back cover to cover they read all know all these scriptures I'm real with you. I don't memorize all the scriptures. I don't know them like yeah. in my memory like that. But the difference between the people here in Israel, and those outside who may know them like that, is that we understand what we're reading. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you I have a better chance of picking up the Bible, opening it, reading it, and understanding whatever it is put on my lap, you know, because of how I was raised and taught. Um, so I'm able to have that basic understanding so that I'm able to read and truly understand and know what it means. And yeah. having the understanding and knowing how to live that in my own Israelite life, I feel like just I'm kind of always walking in that. So every day when I'm waking up, I'm always an Israelite. It's something I always am. I'm constantly being an Israelite. Um, so <laughs> and just bring it all back together. Um, I guess I just want to say that, like, the difference and having, I guess, the power of having that understanding um, to understand that. An Israelite isn't a part-time job. I feel like Paul summarized it so well, how it's, there's a sense of pride in it, but there's also a burden too. It's, this is how we live our life. It's both, it's both sides. Um, and I just <laughs> had to say that get off my chest. Yeah, I think that's uh, wonderfully said, Levi. Um, you, you were brought up um, in this culture, which is such a blessing for you. Uh, for those of us that were not, that we're like maybe five years in, some of us two years in, you know, we have not had the um, 
just the blessing of that. And I'll call it that, not just, not even that, just the pleasure even of that. So to, to know that and to be confident in that, that's like a whole different walk. That's like a whole different being. And a lot of us new brethren that has that have come in, and I'll just even say myself from Christianity, we're so used to have been read to. You know, one thing about Elder Shadrach that I love and I hear him say all the time is you read it. He says you read it. And whereas you're sitting up waiting for someone to not that you're waiting for them to read it to you. It's just that the way that things were done. But now knowing this truth, when you're picking up the Bible and you read it, you understand you understand that it's you, you know, that it's you that they're talking about and that they're speaking of is your culture, is your history, is your ancestors. And that changes your whole mindset. You so, know, something that you, good you for said, you. Something you said about, uh, uh, we said earlier about uh, Christianity, how they lie to us. You know, yeah. but it takes, it takes another person. Like you, you have to believe the lie, right? And if that's enough, but in the lie, you have to believe it, right? Mm -hmm. And think about Israel and our elders. He says, you know what? Read anything. Because we know that we had the truth. And no matter yeah. what they say, we already know they lying already, right? Yeah. And all we have to do is show them. Listen, this is what the truth says. This is the truth, not not facts. Because all we say is facts. Facts change, right? But the truth is constant. The truth never changes. The truth is like, for instance, Pluto was a planet ten years ago. Now it's not anymore. Then it was a fact, right? But the truth is the truth. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the name of the God of the Bible. And it was written many years ago. And guess what? It's still the truth. It hasn't changed. It's still the same. It hasn't changed. So, yeah. Truth. It's true. Yeah. We have the and, truth. We have it. In nation, the we truth, have the truth. And the truth will set you free. All right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we are free indeed. So true. So we're going to move on to the next slide, moderator, if you don't mind. So this is also going more into understanding. Do we have anyone else to read? I'll go. All right. Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, ye have seen what I do unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will observe, will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. All right. Nice. All that the Lord spoken, we will do. Yes. So, yes. A lot of keeping work the command, yeah, keeping the commandments, statutes, and laws. That's what we just got to, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you read it, he's so protective, right? Mm -hmm. If we do right, no matter what, how bad it gets, it, you know, you, you see this, read the scriptures, you know, no matter how bad it gets, like Joseph, his brothers sold him out, right? He went to Egypt. Yeah. Bad, horrible. But guess what, man? Because of that, the blessings to his family, no matter how it looks, how bad it looks, we can't lose the faith. We can't, we can't forget that if we walk that path, if we walk the path that he instructed us to, to, to walk, he's going to take care of us. Yeah, but it could be a few stones in the pathway. You might have to duck, you know, go to the side here and there, you know, whatever. <laughs> but long as you stay on that path, don't go, don't don't go in the woods. You gotta stay in the path, right? It's already laid there. 
Now go on, don't go in the woods now, because all them beasts out there might get you. So you gotta stay on the path, right? It, it, it might be long, because it's not a it's not a a, a a short. It's not a it's not a, a a sprint. It's a marathon, right? It's a marathon. So you gotta endure to the end. Man, our God is great, man. What He does for us. It, it, think about it. You know, I, me personally. I, I I knew there was something missing. I knew the rat race wasn't it. It wasn't it, right? Yeah. And, and I couldn't see me, but for I was called. You know, I knew it was called because the people who brought me to Israel. First of all, they're not here anymore. So it's almost like they were there for me. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank I'm gonna continue on here because think about it, you do a marathon, you pass the time, right? Your your part is ended. So other people go on. So I'm I'm continuing on. I don't want to give up. So the God of Israel, because man, He does so much for us, so much for us. Thank God to the God of Israel, and our, our our nation, that we can keep going and fight and stay in this battle, man. This is yeah. That's that's our strength, you know. Yeah. Wow. That's so true. Yeah, Elder Dexter, you're exactly right. I mean, sometimes it does get weary, and we do we do have challenges and. It's not an easy walk. I mean, for those of us too that are not, you know, near local branches, that makes it challenging. And um, but we've got to stay connected. You know, we've got to stay on the journey. And um, he didn't say it would be easy. You know, and we're gonna have you know things that will happen in our lives because we live in this world. You know, but I think as long as we stay connected, we stay grounded. As far as for me and some of my experiences. This is what has helped me through, you know, because when you're not surrounded by other people that uh, believe like you, uh, fortunately, I do have my daughter near, but still it's just her and I. But when you don't have that, you know, uh, family just right there that you can just, um, you know, go to or surround yourself with, it can really be challenging, but we can overcome it. We've just got to stay in the fight. We've got to stay in prayer, stay in the word, stay connected to, you know, the nation and Bible study and brethren that you've um, that you've got to know. And it's a uh, it, it's a wonderful journey. It's a wonderful journey. Yeah, I agree with Yvonne here. Basically, um, I like the verse when he says, "Obey my commandment." This is so deep, you know. Um, as an Israelite, you have to understand the God of Israel is like a father to us, a father to us. So you have to understand what he likes, what he doesn't like. So for him to say, obey my commandment, it's not just a word, you have to put into actions. So those mm -hmm. actions, we've been blessed because the God of Israel kept his word and his covenant and sent our elder Shadrach to teach us back all we think we lost in the past so now we know what to do when he says obey my commandment we have to understand okay this is the requirement so what do you mean by that so it means sabbath service new moon any uh feast anything that apply to the god of Israel is all the way down to the teaching that the children put through to the supreme council all of, that's our culture so we have to put in the action and that's why men obey my commandment. And when you reach that level, now you're standing on your feet. Mm -hmm. Actually, and you're going to the right direction. That's what he said to the elders. They all said, yes, we're gonna put it, we're gonna do it. But in the action, then try to please our fathers. And that layer, I completely, yeah, I agree with you. That part stood out to me as well. You know, obey my commandments and you will be my peculiar treasure. I mean, why, why would we not want to be that? Who wouldn't want to be that? I mean, not being near a branch, like, yes, it is tough, but you have to be persistent in this walk, in this journey. Um, and, you know, at times it does it does get hard, you know, and we see that with Moses, you know, there were times that he struggled, um, but the God of Israel saw him through to the end, you know, and that that's something that we always have to keep in mind. The journey is not always going to be easy, but it will be mm -hmm. worth it. That's right. Yes. So true. Mm -hmm. and also, kind of want to go back to what Auntie Iman said um, about kind of having the 
you like you said you're talking about the support and being able to I guess lean on others and just I feel like because it kind of relates to what took place in the wilderness because immediately after everyone says we will do what we are asked all, all heck breaks loose okay everything goes downhill and to me I think it's because the people of Israel they weren't in they didn't have that spiritual connection not all of them were spiritually tied to their God the way that they should be. They weren't truly devoted. They were just saying words, but they didn't meet it. And that caused a lot of their lives in the wilderness. So one, I feel like it means that this path, like how Elder Dexter said, it's a serious path. You can either follow it or you're going to fall off. There's no middle ground. There's no ifs or buts. And two, I think also means that we have to have that strong connection if we ever want to be successful. Because the journey in the wilderness was not supposed to be 40 years. It was not supposed to take 40 yeah. years to get to where we were going. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't focus on our connection, make sure that the ground we were standing on wasn't level, we ended up harming ourselves. And now we're all out here waiting 40 years in the wilderness, just sitting around because that's the punishment that we were given, a 40 yeah. years timeout. <laughs> so um, I just think that yeah. kind of shows you the importance of understanding, understanding the value of your words, especially when you're making promises with the God of Israel. You have to understand the importance of that and the value of that. And re respect in a way, too. I feel like if they also respected that importance, that, that connection they had, they understood that respect. They understood who this man was, who this God was. I feel like things would have been, turned out differently. You know, Levi, um, there's one thing is. It's very interesting what you said, um, and I'm going back to Yvonne too. It's unity. When you live outside of the outside of the the branch, it's unity. So that connection we can have with, like for example, each branch or its brethren, bring us together closer. Because when you're alone, you're under attack. You are you are in the enemy territory. So you need the support. The only support you can get is from your true branch or like for myself for example is the is the the hq toro so every time i make my journey over there i go recharge my batteries recharge because when i come back here i'm in it enemy's territory i'm on my own so those guys can throw everything at me but i recharge always when i see my brethren we laugh we we connect you know and those unity uh, like you said in the witness if they have this connection you, we can encourage one another. If one made mistakes, hey, we can't do this. Come on, this pick yourself up. That's unity. And we together we stand strong than being alone. You be at the mercy of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. True. Hilaire, that is so powerful. It just makes me think about uh the other week in Bible study. And shout out to uh Minister Anthony. He does a great job with our Bible study. But anyway, we had one of the brethren that um, actually led uh, Bible study that, you know, that he uh, allowed to lead Bible study that night. And she shared with us some challenges that she was having in her life. And basically, you know, she was it, it was a very it's a very difficult time for her. But one of the things that she said is that having uh, the nation, having Bible study, uh, to be a part of, to to uh, have that weekly connection with the other brethren has really just helped her uh, to kind of stand strong, to stand on her spiritual feet, basically. And it was kind of um, ironic when uh, she was talking about this because I knew that this was, was coming up, uh, this lesson. And as she was speaking, that's all I could think about is how she's standing on her spiritual feet. Uh, but she was sh sharing with sharing with us, excuse me, how she was doing that. And it was through what you were just talking about, uh, Hilaire, exactly what you were just talking about. And it was uh, extremely inspiring to all of us. And it was uh, just a beautiful Bible study night. You know, it's putting it's in mind of, of, you know, our, our spring year where, you know, the whole year, you know, the season of death, you know, it's cold, it's dark, you know, um, you go in the store, you might go to uh, to your lo local store and you hear the, the X-Men songs, you know, it's so, man, you, it, hey, they say, what, happy Christmas? 
Oh, are you kidding me? You know, that kind of stuff like that, you know. But now it's our time. The season changes and the spring comes. And our New Year's, we celebrate. We, and we come together for Passover as a nation. Yes. You know, these things make us strong, right? So that's the first tip. You, you got to you gotta want to be free, right? You got to, and, and, and you got to see that through the scriptures. Because there's no December or January in the Bible, right? There's no Saturday or Sunday in the Bible. Is this not? We can't. We can't make up things. Cause when you start making up things, you, you serve a different God, right? Instead, you serve the God of Israel. He says the beginning of months is the month of Abib, right? That's what it, that's what he says. You know, he told Moses that. But the thing is, he didn't tell everybody that. Yeah. He only told us, so they can do their January New Year whenever they want to. Who cares? That's fine. But not us, right? I mean, you, you, you see on you see on the TV, you see all the gigabytes. They be wearing the green hats, drinking the green beer. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Come on, yeah. talking about we're Irish today. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You no, know, we can be the best, and it's, it's like we can be the worst, Jacob. We can be the best and worst. All, oh, yeah. and we're special yeah. in that way. You know, we can, but we can be the yeah. best servants of God of Israel. Mount Zion that he loved, or we can be some disobedient Jacobites. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's true. true. All right. Great discussion, everyone. We're going to keep it going with the next slide, please. All right. The next topic we have is commitment. So, this, I feel like this kind of ties perfectly into just what we were talking about. about understanding that promise and then the commitment that comes with it. So do I have anyone who wants to read this slide for us today? Read. Am I on that? Okay. Ruth 1, 3 through 7, unwavering commitment to Naomi and the God of Israel. And Elimelech, Elimelech, Naomi's husband died and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. And Milan and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters in law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters. All right. So <laughs> I do want to say one thing, Ruth. I think the story of Ruth, that is a great, really great story. And I think that's something that's really inspired me. I really like Ruth's character and her personality. Well, not we like her character and personality. And I feel like she's a great example of what commitment is. Um, one thing about Ruth is when I first read this chapter, or like one day I was just like thinking about it. I was like, hmm, it's weird that it was weird because like you see these uh ta not tales, but moments in our history in the Bible where like you have Moses, you know, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, or David becoming a king, defeating Goliath, you know, all these massive moments that completely changed the course of our Israelite history. And then you have Ruth's tale. And Ruth's tale, it isn't as massive or as big as those other ones on the first look until you think about what comes forth from Ruth because of that commitment. Um, through Ruth's tale and her story, through her lineage, we're able to have David and eventually even Jesus. And it's just so beautiful how this one simple moment of unwavering commitment and passion from someone who was an outsider but came into Israel was able to eventually have such a massive snowball effect on the rest of our Israelite history. Like to me, that's just so mind blowing. It's, um, I guess it's beautiful. It makes me fired up and passionate. And it tells me that like even just the smallest actions of commitment and the smallest things that we do as Israelites can have massive impacts or effects in the future. Yeah. And, oh. Levi, I totally agree. I, I totally love this story too. 
And I want to kind of flip it a little bit, uh, giving much credit to Ruth, of course, but even to Naomi. I mean, when I think about her as being the mother-in-law, I mean, just think about in, in just in our world, who follows their mother-in-law? I mean, it's uh, like people just don't think like that. They don't, you know, most, a lot of people just don't even like their mother-in-laws. But I'm thinking that from Naomi's uh, standpoint, she must have been a awesome Israelite woman. I mean, because I'm just thinking about how she must have handled herself, how she must have carried herself, especially in the death of her own husband. And then they watched her for many years go through being a widow and then her two sons pass away. And then the, her daughter-in-laws are watching her through that. And just the type of Israelite woman that she must have been for them to say it's daughter-in-laws and for Ruth to say, I'm not going back to my mother, because she said, you go back to your mothers, you know, your mothers, which is what most women would do. But they, she said, no, I'm going with you. So it had to be something in Naomi that Ruth saw that, you know, she, she just had to be an awesome mother-in-law. And then the fact that she referred to them, I thought was, was really heartfelt as her daughters. So um, to the both of them, it's just a beautiful um, love story with both women. I totally agree. That's so true. And there's just yeah. so much Beautiful. to take away from this. Yeah, for Ruth, it's um yeah. it's an amazing story because she she left everything behind without asking mm -hmm. you questions. For me, that's the that's one of the most uh, courageous things to do. I mean, you're a stranger, and what she's saying, like, your God be my God, your people be my people. So she left everything behind and she putting her trust on the guide of Israel. And the amazing, as an Israelite, I mean, you look at a stranger who decide to put all his trust, put gamble his life to the guide of Israel. And at the end, you see, if you look, if you read Ruth's story, how it pays off. And she, yeah. she, she didn't even sit and wait. She worked for it. I mean, if you, if you read the whole story, she went in the field to work and try to feed um, Naomi. I mean, it's an amazing story yes. because you don't, you, don't, you don't just sit. You work patiently and you have faith. And she did all that. At the end, everything just pays off. So for me, it's an amazing, an amazing story. Ruth, the great inspiration yeah. to the God of Israel. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, uh, I, I like uh, you all saying this stuff because uh, I think Naomi, you think about you know the, the the whole story of what happened in Israel and they they left, you know, and her husband dies and the sons die, you know, but even though you don't see uh you don't it's not written where the instructions to Ruth in the beginning, but you know she told her something because she's because you said she your God is my God I'm gonna be with you, so it's it it more it's more like she wasn't her her daughter in law she was like her she was her daughter. Right. Daughter. You see yeah. the story how how Ruth her 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 strength become become because she listened to her her mother in law. I won't say yes. mother, her mother, because now she mother, she now she yeah. disregarded her her mother by birth. Now she accepted a new mother, right? Yeah. So that's, you know, mm -hmm. so I can't help but to internalize this, right? So you you have your family you grew up with, right? Yeah. Then you come to Israel. It's mm -hmm. a whole different thing. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying you 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 abandon your original family, but it's like your new Israel family. It takes precedent because your old family is serving other gods, right? So it's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a kind of, it's almost a severing, and you're still close. You're still your your mom, your dad, your siblings, whatever. But now your new family, because now you're doing things that you can do. With, but your other family, right? So I can't help but internalize, <coughs> excuse me, that Naomi was teaching Ruth and teaching <laughs> Ophir as well. But guess what? <laughs> Everyone won't hear, right? But you still have to teach anyway. You still have to spread to teach who you are. You can't put your candle under a blanket. You gotta show it, let the whole world see who you are. And Naomi did that. And because of that, Ruth listened. And now she listened 
She moved. She moved forward. She didn't go back yeah. like Oprah. Oprah went back. You know, hey, what you gonna do? You can't see everybody. That's what it is. You can't yeah. see everyone. You're gonna just say yeah. the one who are like minded. And that's and true. Ruth was. It's so true because so the connection of Naomi um, is the same connection as Job. Naomi lost her husband and the two sons, right? But she still have a faith in the guide of Israel and mm -hmm. teaching Ruth what actually is important. It's all about the guide of Israel. So you don't give up no matter what the world throwing at you, no matter what the, the trouble, the trial, the tribulation you're going through, you keep your faith to the guide of Israel. And that's what Naomi been teaching to Ruth, and Ruth saw that, and for her to take the strength and courage, because she lost her husband too. But she said, no, I'm still going to go with you, and your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. So she's leaving everything behind to start a new life. That's an amazing story. Well, you know what, just tying into that, Hilaire, I'm sitting up here thinking about uh, our topic, which is uh, standing on your spiritual feet. And for Naomi even to have the strength as a woman that has lost a lot and now being older to even say, I'm going back to my family. I'm going mm -hmm. back to my people. You know, we're going to travel back. I'm leaving this. I'm going back. So she knew that she needed in order for her to keep standing on her spiritual feet, she needed to go back to what she was familiar with to her people, to her God. And yeah, that that's good right there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely because, oh, sorry, go ahead, Hilaire. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Bianca. Oh, I was just gonna say, I mean, Naomi could have just given up, right? She could have thrown Naomi. her hands up. I lost my husband, I lost my sons. All I have are these two daughter-in-laws. Like, I'm just gonna go out here and live my life and do whatever I want when I want. And again, like that brings me back to the word like persistent like she was persistent in her walk and she was faithful to the God of Israel and mm -hmm. Ruth followed and Ruth was blessed, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, it's just about sticking, you know, to the journey. It's not always yeah. going to be easy, but nope. it's going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you yeah. never know how that's going to look. And then it yeah. happens and you're like, wow, this, yeah. this is amazing. You yeah, know, the, the whole thing is basically is the the big picture. You always yeah. have to see the big picture. What's the big picture? You're asking yourself, I mean, you're going down, you're struggling, but what's the big picture? The big yeah. picture, you focus yeah. on the big picture, and the big picture is the guy of Israel. So you yes. know that whatever you do, he has your back. So yes. that's the big picture. So that's yes. what Ruth has as Naomi. Job, Job is my one of the most inspiration book I've ever read. Is the big picture. You always look at the big picture. And for us, standing on a spiritual, really standing is the big picture. Is the family, the unity, the nation, God of Israel, everything we know is the big picture. That's the, that's the key, the big picture. Well, that's it, Hilaire, and he never lets us down. He never lets us down. Amen. We just got to stay in there. That's good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, those are all great. Love it. You already got this down, like yeah. Fires, fires in the you. chat. Fires in the chat. Fires in the chat, indeed. Enjoyed yes. it. Put some sevens. Yeah, some sevens, <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's check out the next slide. So, um, this is just continuing on, I, I, and I, I don't mind reading this one. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, go return to each her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with, dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, surely we will return unto thee, unto thy people. And Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should say I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons. So 
I feel like this kind of just ties into what we've already been saying, um, how Naomi was such a key important figure in these girls' lives. Um, she, they, they don't want to leave her. This woman is there all, by all purposes, is their mother. Is she their was mother. there for them in those times of grieving and mourning. And who she was is showing how she was such a powerful Israelite woman. It affected them. And I think as you read the story of Ruth, like we said, I think it affected Ruth the strongest because even when Naomi's like, no, you can't come with me. She was committed. She yeah. was persistent. She stayed with it. She said, no, I have to go with you. Yeah, I have to be a part of this culture. I want to be like you. I want to know who your God is, you know? Yeah. She sought to, and I feel it as a way to, in this time of grief, instead of where she lost, losing all her family members in this time of grief, she, I feel like it's kind of like a way of trying to find a way to better yourself and making sure you're kind of self good mentally in a way, you know, making sure you're strong spiritually. She saw that what Naomi had to be that strong Israelite woman to kind of have that hope, I guess, in those more dark or sad or rough times. And I feel yeah. like that would inspire Ruth. Ruth to yeah. further persist, persist towards that. I'm sorry. Yeah, Levi, totally. And and I'm just as you you were reading that, I was just thinking about the selflessness of Naomi to the point that she told them, "Go, you know, go your way, go to your mother." She didn't say, you know, she didn't drag them and say, "I need you" or "Come with me" or whatever. You know, she told them to go. So that was very selfless because she could have been selfish and um, begged them to come with her or whatever. But they, she gave them, basically told them to return to their people. And like you said, Orpa, she decided to go, even though at first she, you know, she started to follow. But Ruth was like, no, this is it. She was right or die. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I that, love it. That, that's so true, Yvonne. You know, um, my experience, the God of Israel always have a plan B for you, always have a plan for you. But the problem is, we as a people sometimes we don't understand it so yeah. for you to appreciate what the guy of Rizal has put aside for you you have to go through struggle to appreciate yes. it so he always have a plan b and that's no no matter what he has a plan for you and you can see for naomi perspective if you look at the whole story she went she left the family to go to another place because of the famine right so that was like kind of our own lust trying to find a solution, but the guy of reason has a better plan. So after she struggled, she came back, she realized, listen, the guy of Israel is the guy of Israel. And she came back with the family, guess what? Prosperity, blessings, everything, because the guy of Israel always have, have a plan B for you, but we don't understand what is the plan. Yep, <clears throat> yep, so she made the right choice. You know, in, in Psalms, that was, he says, for, for us to open your mouth wide and he will fill it, right? So yeah. it tells us, as long as we are open to this truth, he will guide us. He will give us instruction on what to do and what not to do, right? Mm -hmm. All we have to do is make sure that we are open to hear the truth. I think uh, Ruth, she was open. Right, mm -hmm. she wasn't committed yet until she made an action. Right, she said she would do, and not until she actually left her, her people did she start being committed. Because what she's gone is like this is what she's gone. She she made a decision, right? And and she was open to hear the truth that was that that the, the um <clears throat> excuse me that Naomi spoken to her, right? Uh, we have to be open to the truth. You know, mm -hmm. and we, and the thing is, it is, it, it's, it's also it, it's it's strengthening. If the God of Israel says, "Just open your mouth and I will fill it," He's saying, "Don't worry about it." If, if your heart is right, if you want to do it to serve me, I will teach you how. I will show you how to teach the people who are lost. Yeah, but you have to be willing to do it. It has, yeah. to, it has to come from your heart and you're ready to do it. And, and that's serious, you know, it's serious that we can do things that we that's, that's far beyond our imagination 
That's all we have to do is be willing to serve the God of Israel. If it, if it, if it's, if it requires to be up two in the morning to do it, that's what you got to do. If it requires that you got to, I don't know, whatever you got to do, you got to work hard and you, you, go to work, you, you go to your job and you come home and you do this and do that. That's what's required to to build this nation. Because there's so much to do yeah. to build this nation. We got so much, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't have a community of Israelites. Yeah. You know, serving the God of Israel. Don't worry about yeah. jobs. We have our own jobs, right? Yeah. For ourselves. You know. But yeah. we have to we have to walk on walk walk on faith. Yeah. Uh, can you walk on faith? You, you yeah. can you can Israelite on, on, on a seventh day. What about you on, on another day? When, right. right when someone's at your, your buddy, yeah. your coworker, yeah. right? Those days that really matter. You can't. You, you gotta take it. You gotta take it where you go. You're an Israelite. No, where you go, it's in yep. your bones and your flesh. You're an Israelite. So now you gotta yeah. behave like one. If it's yeah. Saturday day, it's the whole day, not the service day. It's the whole day. Yeah. The Saturday. Right. Day, right. That's your life. It, you're not a half an Israelite. You're a whole Israelite. Yeah. You know, you and Elder more. Dexter. Yep. And Elder Dexter, um, Elder Denise made a good point in the chat. She says, mm -hmm. peace and blessings followed because of her obedience. David, Jesus came from the union of Ruth and Boaz. Such yeah. an honor. Yeah. And she said, you have to be an open and willing vessel for the God of Israel to use you. And that's what Ruth was. That's yeah. So I think she was already uh, kind of committed even before they left right. because she did not hesitate. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah, but great point. Said, your God will be my God. Will be my God. I, that's that right. Be, your that God was be before my God. they left. That's like yeah. God of Israel is own heart. And that's right. That fruit to David. See, look at the descendants. You know, it's, it's just yeah. amazing. And like Elder Dexter said, don't be a part time. Be a full time. You know, uh, mm -hmm. seven days. You Israelite seven days. No, just uh, one day and six days. You're a party goer. No, no, no. Be a full time, your Israelite. This is this is who we are. Back then we were lost, but now we know who we are. So mm -hmm. stand strong and be a full time Israelite. <laughs> so true, everyone. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see our next slide. So I think this just kind of goes deeper into the story of Ruth. So you can keep it going with the next slide. Keep it going. <laughs> um, I would want to say, if you haven't, read the story of Ruth on your own. It's a great yeah. story and it's a great read. And you, there's so much you can take away with that, even outside of just commitment. So many elements that I could go on and on and on about, about that small little chapter. But of course, we do have a bit of a time strain. So moving on to the next topic is knowing your opponent. What do you guys think about that? Mm. You know, in my in my sports background, you know, it's been a while ago, but you know, it's important to know your opponent because <laughs> you gotta know their weaknesses and their strengths, right? Now you still have you still be you, but you understand what what they bring to the table. That's always important. All right. I think Elder Dexter, you mentioned knowing your opponents, you know, strengths and weaknesses, but you also have to know your own strengths and weaknesses, yeah. right? Oh, like great. there are going to be times that we are going to fall short or that, you know, our faith is wavering, but that is when we need to put on that armor, you know, whether it be just watching the Israelite nation worldwide ministries videos, you know, just reading scripture or connecting with brethren. Like we need to be, you know, as prepared as we can be through this journey, because it's not, it's not easy and it's not always going to be easy. That's so yeah. true. I agree with uh, Bianca. Hey, know your opponent, know your enemy. Uh, Sometimes you have to be honest to yourself. You look at yourself like, okay, what's my weakness? What am I supposed to do to make it right? So when you identify yourself where, where you are weak, so you try to make it right. And sometimes only takes prayer, lessons, and unity. So that's where you get your strength because your weakness could be because your 
isolate on your own and you become weak, but you have to identify yourself. What can I do to make it right? So the more you know yourself, so sometimes the worst enemy you'll be surprised is yourself. It wasn't it's in your mind. Way. The mm -hmm. worst mm -hmm. enemy to be mm -hmm. yourself. But mm -hmm. you have to identify, separate yourself. Say, okay, this is what I'm weak. And this is what I can do. I have all the tools. You have the Israelite music, you have the lessons, you have Elder Shadrach teaching. So you have all the ingredients. So when you identify your weakness, now you go to the direction to be strong spiritually and standing. Yeah. Lara, that's a great point. And don't you think that um, sometimes in order to recognize our weaknesses, that you have to kind of be in a humble place because a lot of times we want to think that we're not weak in certain areas or we want to think we're strong when we're not. And you have to kind of humble yourself and recognize that, you know what, I might not have that all together. I might not be, you know, doing my part or uh, doing the things that I'm supposed to do, you know, uh, on a regular, like we were talking about, uh, Bianca was saying something about consistency. And so we have to kind of consistently be in a humble place to recognize our own, before we think we can fight some battle or uh, defeat our opponent, we have to recognize our own weaknesses and be humbled enough to know that we are weak there and we need to work on ourselves. Looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what, that's ugly right there, or I have to get that together. And I speak that because it's been many times I've had to do that myself, I'll just say. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Hilaire. Humility, humility. Yeah. Humility, yeah. That's it's huge. Thing. We'll probably get more into this with the next slide, but um, just my small thoughts is um, when I just kind of put into context of what goes on today, I kind of think of when you look outside and you see out the window, all these people doing St. Patrick's Day. Well, I shouldn't say St. Patrick's Day. We're just going to say Patrick's Day or getting ready to do Easter or Valentine's, or whatever kind of foolishness they're doing. They don't understand what it's about. They don't understand what it's about. They don't understand the meaning of it. Um, they don't fully understand what they're participating in. But me as an Israelite, to properly prepare myself against those negative actions, that negative spirit, I have to kind of understand what I'm up against. I have to know why I don't do Easter. I know why I don't do Christmas. But like you said, also looking on my own self and my own strength, knowing what helps to strengthen and protect me, I know what does give me strength. I know why I do Passover. I know why I do Day of Atonement. I know why I do Sabbath and New Moon. I know the importance of all these things. And that's just kind of small thoughts that come to mind. And I feel like what everyone has already said here today or ties it directly to that. So that's just my thought on it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to learn and um, humility. And sometimes, especially for the new people that are coming in, and uh, you really have to use your humility. Like a child, basically, ready to learn, ready to grow. You know, Don't come up with your luggage. Mm -hmm. Like, I know this, I know right. No, start from the scratch. Like a child and ready to learn, to renew your spirit. And mm -hmm. that's the key on all this to be a true Israelite. Yeah. You can't understand. You, know, you made a good point. You made a good point. You, you talked about, you know, Passover. It's, it's clear and to the point. You can read it and see what it, what it says and what it is. These Easter and all other things, these, these holidays, it's always caught in deception. See, they don't truly know what it is. That's the plan. See, once you keep them ignorant, they don't know it, but they'll just do it blindly. But in our case, it's clear. You know why it's Passover. You know what you do. You know what happened to Passover. It's written down in black and white. It's clear. And, and now we say he, it got really said you tell your children what it, what it means with Passover, right? I didn't say about Easter. I didn't say nothing about Easter, right? So that's that's, the, that's why they're so easy to see, because again, they're going by the lie and not the truth, you know. So yeah, so it, it, it feels good to, to you know what it feels great to to be at Passover and you see, you know what? Thus saith the Lord. You know who can say that? Who can say that you're doing what the Lord says? Who can say that outside of my nation? Nobody can say that, you know, Nobody. but us. You know, so these things, man, they make your foot strong, your legs strong, they put them legs up, you know, so now you, you can walk straight up, no slouching down, you know, 
so you know I'm an Israelite, you know? Yeah. I know what I must do, you know? So it just feels good, right? You know, Elder Dexter, it's so true what you say. You know, I did many, I call it many fakes Passover. You know, like fake Passover. You think that it's a part, but it's no Passover. So being Israel, it's, it's totally different. It's, it's just unique. The instruction you've been given, the it's it just, you read the Bible like, hold on a minute, that's exactly what I'm doing, what is written in the Bible, especially when you do those fake mazo, fake things like, you think it's a Passover? No. So you have to be here. You have to be the family to understand because this is a it's a family secret that the guide of Israel gave to his own children. So you don't know how we do the Passover. You don't know how we prepare the 11 bread or how we do the lamb. You wouldn't know that. If you're not here, whatever you do outside of this nation, it's fake. It's like fake news. Mm. It's so fake because you have to be in here to have the secret of the family and that secret only the guide of Israel will give it to you through a master teacher elder Shadrach and the supreme council no other secret and also just one thing that's just going around today understanding goes back to the beginning of this message yeah. you know understanding yeah. um I like you said earlier uncle Hilaire how you have to be humble you can't understand if you got all this noise going on in your head or you're all high and mighty with your puffed, you know, chest puffed out. You can't understand. You have to be humble when you come into this culture. You got to lower yourself down, understand that you're being taught. You're a babe in a womb. And then once you start to grow, you're able to take on the next step, which is the commitment. You're able to make that choice. And then even further, you understand, you have even more understanding knowing what it is that is outside, what the enemy is all about and what we're all about. And it's just great how all that builds on each other. But you know, I do. What Larry said about the secret, you know, let's it, it's, it's sit on that for a little bit. The <laughs> creator of the heaven and the earth. Think about that for, for one second now. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Oh boy. He keeps it free with you. I yeah. guess, <laughs> just think yeah. about that. That's for a second. Yeah. He's keeping the secret with you. For only your ears to hear, for nobody else. You know, there's a show, you know, I hate to, what's it called? The, the talk show, the, the gossip show. And she, she says, I forgot her name, uh, Jacobite, I forgot her name. She, she's no longer on the show, the show, but but one part of the show, she like, she like, come in and talk. Come on, guys, I got to you to tell you. Like, so everybody's listening, right, to engage them. What you got to say, ask the God of Israel. He said, come listen, I got to tell you something. Only for your ears and nobody yes. else. Yes. So don't worry about them. They got their own God. I'm talking mm. to you. This is our secret between us. Man, that's what we got. That's yeah, that's why it's a special relationship to us. Like it's to mm -hmm. nobody in the world. It's special yeah. to us. Yeah. You gotta feel something about that. You got to. Mm -hmm. You got, got to. to. Yeah. Especially those those secret ingredients to make those special lamb. If you know any family, you don't taste it. It's so different. Whatever you try, trust me, it's fake. But when you try ours, oh boy. Listen, I can't wait next week, man. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm flying. Ancient Israelite secret, right? Oh, I can't <laughs> wait, too. Man. I can't wait. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's beautiful. <laughs> so mm. great topics going all around. Let's get into the next slide. So going forward, forward on, we're going to get into the armor of God. So Ephesians 6, 11 to 16, anyone want to read? Sure. Uh, extra elder, extra elder, did you, elder Dexter, did you start or, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, you, you got it. Okay, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, in having done all to stand. 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay. That's wow. a bar. Amen. That's a lot. That's, strong. that's that's true preparation right there. That's 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 like whew, that's like you're really ready for battle when you read that and 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 do what it says. That's uh and when it says the breastplate of righteousness, I mean just wow. this truth, living this truth, and that's what you know, that's just, that's what I hear, you know, taking on this truth and living this truth and having it girded in you and upon you. Um, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. You know, you read the scripture and I put, put in mind, you know, Jacobites, we tend to always get in and indulge in conspiracy theories, right? What's this and what's that and who's doing this and who's doing that and this, this, that, all these things. Right, and it really shouldn't matter to us, right? And this and this shows us. See, the wicked, the wicked, they do all kind of things, <clears throat> and behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. What's the point of you getting engaged in that when you have the truth? All you have to do is put on that armor of God, right? All that stuff yes. don't matter. All you gotta do is put on the armor of God and walk the path, walk the walk, right? What's that? Or the, 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 the guy that blew, they took the blue pill. You can know the walk, the walk the walk. Was that uh, uh, back in the day? It was a movie called. Remember, somebody help me out. The movie, the movie called the guy. Yeah, the red pill and the blue pill. Right? Oh, Matrix. Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. Yeah. 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 So it's just to, to know the walk. We have to walk the walk, right? So don't worry about all that foolishness. The conspiracy yeah. theories, this, 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 Trump, this, this, that, all these kind of foolishness. It don't matter to you. They don't know about the God of Israel, but you do. You have the truth. See, again, you gird that tr truth on, the armor, and now you walk the walk. Walk with pride. Don't worry about them. You see, what, what, what the problem is, have is and then you engage in what they do you engage in that foolishness. That's when you have problems. Yeah. But when you walk the path that's for you, because they have their own path, their own God, yeah. right? So that's okay for them, right? But you, once you get a part of that path, you have troubles. You will have troubles. We had 400 years of troubles, didn't we? 400 years of troubles <laughs> we had, yeah. you know? So let's not exactly. get in that path. Let's stay in our path. If we would obey the God of Israel, you know what? If you read the story of Deuteronomy, when Moses, when we're talking about talk, talk, Moses saying, "Now, uh, you know, don't worry, they're gonna sin. They're gonna, they're gonna mess up." <laughs> and, we, and we remember we we said all these things we will do, but he knew we we're gonna mess up, so he he, he gave us reasons. So when you go in the land of captivity, you know, when you go in this, do this, because you're gonna go. Because I know you, I know our people. We stubborn. We don't listen. We forget. Right, we, we do that kind of stuff. So so and so instead of being stubborn and forgetful, let's remember who we are, and remember whose we are. Remember where we came from. Remember the path he said for us to take. Remember that stuff. Don't yeah. forget that. And guess what? Yeah. If you might slide, guess what? You have family to pick you up yeah but you have to connect to them they'll pick yeah. you up because we all come we can't serve the government by ourselves it's impossible we can't sing his praise by ourselves we can't it's not enough he's worthy of so much more right so we can give some as we come as a nation to him if we come to, if we come to a nation then maybe we give him some of the praises that he deserves but by mm -hmm. ourselves we can't it has to have more but he says what with two more together in my name, there I am, right? So if we mm -hmm. do that, man, if we do that, oh, well, you know, hey, you know, it's not, you know what it is. If we, if we obey the God of Israel, you know, hey, he, he will bless us. You know, he will give mm -hmm. us strength. 
you know? There's way about no conspiracy theories about this and this or that. Are you kidding me? Get out of here with that stuff. <laughs> you know, cut it off. You know, Sever it off. You know, Elder Dexter, it's so true what you're saying. You have to understand what's the what's the required to wear the armor of God. If you don't know, you cannot understand. I mean, if you go to Deuteronomy 28 and 29, and what you say, blessing and curses, basically, if you don't obey the guide of Israel, you cannot wear his armor. That will protect you. So you have to understand how, what is the armor? So basically, it's telling you it's obedience to law, statute, and commandment. Keep the Sabbath. Keep basically everything you've been told to this nation. That's your armor. That's going to protect you to go further. When the enemy comes, I mean, the best example I can say with Job, Job had the armor because the guy of Israel was able to tell uh, Lucifer, have you seen my servant Job? Basically, he's so proud of him. Why? Because he was doing the right thing, he was keeping the law, he was praying, he was keeping everything together. Then when the enemy comes, the armor, he cannot touch him. So to the point that the guy of Israel has to tell Lucifer, okay, you know what, you're going to test him? I know my I know my boy, I trust him. Go ahead. I don't touch him. You understand? So he had that armor, he was protected. And that's the beauty. You have to understand. And everything that our elders teach us, every single thing, keep the Sabbath, come together in unity, keep all together. That's your armor. That's your way. Like I've been watching this movie, like you know, like they have like this magnetic um shield that protects you. When yeah. we are together, we have that magnetic shield that protects us. That's the armor, unity, family, our culture, law, statue, and commandment. Everything that's the armor. But if you don't know how to wear it, you can go outside and say, Oh, I believe in the God of Israel, it's good enough, I'll be fine. No, you won't be fine. You have to be with the family. That's the that's your armor. Excellent point, Hilaire. Excellent point. 100 percent Excellent point. All of that is part of the armor. You're right. Yep. It's all part of the armor. Great point. Auntie Beyonce, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I think just going back to like, you know, always going back to like the armor, you know, putting on that armor and knowing who you are, like Elder Dexter said, who you are and whose you are. You know, just putting on that armor and standing and being confident, you know, in your truth and on your journey to the truth, you know, that's just one of the ways to keep you from being distracted from those things in the world, from the wickedness of the world, and to keep that from to keep you from being infiltrated by the things that are not of the God of Israel. Yes. Um, it's so easy to be or to get distracted or be influenced, you know, by the things of the outside world and the people who the, don't believe like you do and um, who don't worship and pray to the God of Israel. Um, you know, when you don't have that armor on, it's so easy to just, slip back into your past ways. Um, and yeah, that's just, you know, having that armor and being confident in your walk is extremely important. That's so good. Totally agree. Totally. Yeah. Be like roof, take a risk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, all right. So let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> oh, still going. So, uh, Auntie Yvonne, would you like to continue? Sure. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And can we say, Auntie Bianca, you, you already mentioned the word perseverance today when we were talking yeah. about Ruth, and here it is. Everyone yeah. here has that understanding. Yes. Awesome. All have that understanding. Yeah, yeah. Perfect example of an Israelite. Understanding right here on this panel, everyone. Get some yeah. fires and sevens in the chat for this amazing panel. 
Um, yeah. And just knowing that, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, just reading Sword of the Spirit, just knowing where our strength comes from and that the God of Israel is our strength in him. We can accomplish this. We can do all things. We can have the strength to fight. We can have the strength to win. And, uh, and knowing that he does want these great things for our lives, knowing that he did choose us not because we were large in number, but because we were small. Um, and that, you know, he just, he's our provider. He takes care of us. He's our safety net. Um, and the Israelite nation, Elder Shadrach, the, the leaders, um, the Supreme Council have created this safe space for us to come to. Um, to be free to ask questions, to worship, uh, to have this weekly Bible study where we're learning and growing. It's, um, it, and I use the word safe space because it feels like that when I think about, you know, the other brethren that um, share, you know, their life experiences and the things that they're going through and their challenges and how we encourage each other to, you know, put on that breastplate of righteousness and faith and how for all of us, um, and I, I, I hope that I can speak for all of us, that it creates a safe space for us to do that and discuss those things. So um, just big ups to the Israelite nation and Elder Shadrach. I think one thing that I wanna say um, very quickly is that the God of Israel says that you know we need the sword of the spirit, we need the helmet, we need the breastplate, he knew that we were going to face opponents and that we needed to be armed and we needed all of the right things. You know, we needed the, we need the armor. We need the sword. We need the helmet to fight off the wickedness of the world because, you know, this, it, it is a battle. It's a constant battle, you know, especially when you're not near a branch and you have to be very proactive so mm -hmm. yeah i just wanted to say that and you know i'm just thinking too bianca as you're saying that about what hilaire said because he basically gave us what those things look like uh with the breastplate and the armor and all that because all of that is a description and part of uh putting all that on is keeping the commandments the laws the sabbaths the new moons you know because in that is our covering in that is our safety net you know, so, um, yeah, great point. That's true. Facts. Hey, that's, I just want to say uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the spirit and the, and the word. Um, I think it's, it's so important. That, well, first of all, you can could, you could tell by people by this, who they are, by the thing they say and they do. If, if they say, if they say they love, uh, I don't know, Jesus, and they give it gifts on Christmas, you know what their spirit is, right? However, if you, if you say, I love the Lord God as a Jacob, and you have Passover, you know what spirit you have, right? So it's so important to, to understand that and, and, understand, and also understand the words we say, right? If you talk to folks who 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 don't understand or don't have no understanding, the words you say can, can cut sharp like yeah. a sword, yeah. right? Like a sword. And, true. and even though you don't, your intent is not to offend them, but to, to show them the truth, because it, it's not your words, right? Mm -hmm. You've been taught it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's right in the scripture. But when you speak your words, you speak the truth, man, people act a fool. <laughs> really. They say things and do things. Man, are you kidding me? You know, mm -hmm. or they get it, they take offense to it. I'm just showing you the truth. And now they want to kill you, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure, you know, as you take a walk, you have to consider our words that we say. Because people aren't ready for the truth. No. They're just not ready for it. And some people, you know what? Some people just don't want the truth, right? And you see that in, through Jesus. He spoke in parables, right? Because some people just don't want the truth. So you can't give it to them. You know, they got to work for it. You can't just tell them anything. I know we we want to teach and tell folks stuff, but sometimes you, you gotta you gotta hold them pearls. You gotta hold them pearls and put them in your, put them in your, put them in, put them in, this, in your sash and put them in your pocket. Because sometimes you you give it to them, they'll choke on it and they spit it back at you. So you, 
<laughs> so you gotta hold on pearls for someone. Okay, you test them. You know what? I'm an Israelite. Really? You know? And they say, well, I'm a Christian. Well, Christian mm -hmm. is three times in the Bible. You know? Yeah. Israelite is from Genesis to Exodus to, to Revelations. The whole the whole Bible. Come on. Let's, let's get real. I, you know, it, it's so it this confuses me. It confuses me how this world, you know, they say they're Bible based, right? They'll say that they'll throw it around. We're Bible based, but yet you say you're Christian. Yeah. But you're Bible based. Yeah. yeah. You don't call them the God of Israel. Bible based. You keep it yeah. Easter, not Passover. Bible based. What are you talking about? What Bible are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know. What walk are you walking? See, man, this, see, yeah. they, they can't see over the walk. You have to be supported. You have to get strength and balance. And this doctrine is strength and spiritual balance, right? It gives you balance if you do what is instructed. You know, I know. You know, we've been we've been, we've been out of it so long that back in the day, I'm sure you can go you can go in the, in the woods. And you can find a treatment to anything you got. To any element you have, you can find a treatment. But we, we lost that knowledge. We lost it, right? We lost that information, right? Because we we fell, we we followed the strangers and their doctrine, right? So now let's walk the walk, you know. Forget it to talk. Let's walk the walk. <laughs> you yeah, know, let's talk true. all day. Talk all day, right? Let's walk, <laughs> let's let's serve our God, man. You know. And it's, and it's so you know it's it's thing is it's fun to serve our God. It's fun to give Him praise. It's just yes. it's just it gives you joy. And that not sound too corny, is it? But give, 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 give you joy to, to, to just talk about our God, and what He's done for us. Yeah. And we were we've been in the we've been we've been in the worst conditions known to man. The worst. Mm -hmm. There's nobody been treated like us. No one, no one in the entire world who yeah. has our story. Yeah, no that's one. true. Uh, yeah. But the thing yeah. is this, people don't want to hear the story. Even our own don't want to hear the story. They're embarrassed by, by slavery. They're embarrassed about it. Yeah. But how can you yeah. read the scripture and not read slavery? You can't. Yeah. It's all through the Bible. Yes. This is such a great point, Auto Dexter. And all of you guys are just really bringing it tonight. So, once again, fires in the chat and sevens. Um, yes. I'm also going to move on to the next slide. I want to get this last point in before we close out for the night. Uh, so, moderator, if you would support in unity. So, just a short expert from the psalm Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah. That's we're going to get a little bit more into this. Slide 13. All right. Exodus 17, 5 through 9. And I'll, I don't mind reading this one. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod wherewith thou smote, smotest the river. Take thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. And there shall come water out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. They, then he called the name of the place Massa and Mirab because of the ch childing of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then came Emelek and fought with Israel in Redahim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go fight with Emelek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the road, rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses. And go on to the next slide. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the sun going down. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So we're going to mix this 
summary within our last words for tonight, everyone. So support. I, I, I don't mind starting us off. Um, when I just read this, I think this is the ultimate combination of what we've been talking about today. Um, one, it comes from a sense of understanding. Um, the understanding of where our power and where our strength lies. It comes from having that connection with the God of Israel. Moses was, he was a friend of God. He was able to rely and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one, and he was able to receive the instructions that he needed in order for them to defeat Amalek. And then on top of that, when you tie that straight into the support and the unity factor, of course, he can't do it alone. You know how long battles can be? Battles can go on for days sometimes in war, right? So he needs the support of his brethren to hold up his arms. It's such a simple metaphor, but it's a beautiful example of everything that we've been talking about, about standing on your spiritual feet. You should be able to do it, but you can never do it alone. So right. those are my final right. words. I'll let someone else go next. Yeah. Yeah, you, we, we can't do this on our own. Basically, um, when we talk about how do you want to serve the God of Israel? I mean, we, you can pray, that's for sure. That's guaranteed. But you have to understand how to serve him. The best way to serve the God of Israel is to serve the community, to serve this nation, to support this nation. Because some, I mean, my own experience, when I go to Toronto, and sometimes I can see so many tasks to be done, it requires many people together to make it easy for the others. So that's the only way we can serve this nation, when we all together as a one and participate to make this nation to be greater above all the nation. But we can't do this individual, not just Elder Shadrach and the Supreme Council, but all of us as a family in unity, we can make this nation be greater. So when the scripture said, it's so pleasant to see when the brethren come together, you know, it's, it's amazing. And that's what we should do. That's my understanding on this. And for Moses, when they all came together to help him up, that's why he became very strong. Unity. Mm -hmm. And Hilaire, those are like my sentiments exactly. We have to mm -hmm. support each other. We have to be supportive. We have to persevere. We have to be persistent. Um, you know, we can't do this alone. We can pray and hope all we want to, but we have to also put action behind those prayers and you know behind all of that support um yeah and i think that's that's, true. that's how yeah. i feel <laughs> and the only thing i can say is you guys have said it all that's i totally um have the same sentiments as you and hilaire that's great i think the first first verse you know it, it, it set the tone uh we we what we do we must have a sense of purpose Right. We come together for Passover. We understand it's a reason for it, and not just the, the the party and you know the catch up and whatever, whatever. We're here to serve the God of Israel. That's right. And, and when and with Joshua and, and Amalek, they were on the verge of building a nation, as we are today to rebuild the nation. So that is something we have to put in our forefront. And and not only that. We we see our priests and our elders and our uh, our ministers, whoever, whomever you know our, our leadership is in your in your representation. We have to make sure that we got to try to, to help because we have to build a nation. We have it's so much to do, so we have to come together. Like that they they held up a Moses and arms. They came and see he needed help, so you stand you stand in. Don't need to be asked. Let's do it. Let's help. So. Totally so, agree. Yeah. <laughs> those are great final words, everyone. And I just want to thank you guys all for being on this panel with me. I know for some of us, so some of you guys, it may have been your first time, but you guys are awesome. So yeah. I just want you to know that you guys are awesome. You're killing it. Awesome Israelites. This is a fire panel. Great to be here. It was an honor to facilitate and just be able to talk and discuss scripture with all of you guys. Truly an honor. Um, so we're going to close out for tonight. Uh, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, put some fires in the chat. Um, if you want to know more, check out the channel. We got tons of videos and we're always posting on Fridays and Saturdays. You may even find something on Sundays. We're coming out with all kinds of content. Go check it out for yourself and like and subscribe. I promise you're not going to be 
unentertained, and bored. Your thirst for knowledge is going to be filled and then some. So please go check it out. Once again, put some fires in the chat and like it for our wonderful panel. And peace, everyone. Sevens. Peace, peace out. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace.